On top of all of the other scandals and tragedies involving our treatment of migrants at the southern border, both recently under Donald Trump and in the years prior, we now have another absolutely horrendous information, thankfully coming out as a result of both reporters and a congressman. New government documents reveal that over 5,800 complaints of sexual abuse from unaccompanied minors were reported to the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Justice between the years of 2014 and 2018. And again, that's just a few years of reporting there for literally thousands of these sorts of claims. And we're talking about over a thousand. One act would be a tragedy. We have a thousand a year or more. Um, let's talk about the nature of those complaints. Some of the allegations include reports that adult staff members formed relationships with detained minors, showed children pornographic videos, and forcibly touched minors' genitals. Investigations into the allegations often ended in the termination of the staff member, which certainly sounds like good news that there are consequences for this. I would assume that something more than termination from your position would be warranted and also Saying that these people are losing their jobs after they do it is less comforting when you see that year after year after year it continues to happen. And in fact, the numbers are rapidly going up in the past couple of years. So before we get into how we found out about this, some of the statements about it, um, I guess uh, at all surprised. You know, this, uh, when we have people with unchecked power like this, they start doing things that they feel they can do to powerless people, you know? So when you have a system where, of course, we've um, we've given off this power to different uh, groups, for-profit prison types of groups, to house folks that we already see as, as inhumane. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't live up to it. They're all rapists, murderers, and criminals anyway. So who cares what happens to them? It's on another scale of what we do with our prisoners. Because in our prison system, like, oh, those, are, those guys are criminals. It doesn't matter what happens to them now. They commit a crime now. They deserve whatever mm -hmm. happens to them there. So... This is just this has been this has been spread to now this section where now children, who cares what happens to them? We don't care about them. No one's going to do anything about them. Uh, the the administration is already separating them from their families at a at a wide scale. So and no one's stopping them. So what is going to stop me from doing more that I want to do to them? Yeah. It's 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 when you start with a certain mindset and attitude towards certain folks. And it trickles to everyone who has any kind of power over those same people. Who cares? They're not real humans anyway. Yeah, yeah. The the adults are criminals, and the kids are trying to get one over on us. Um, they shouldn't yeah. be here. They don't belong here. Uh, look, I I hope that sort of position when you're working in the actual facilities that are involved in either refugee resettlement or you know uh, temporary holding before going before uh, you know some sort of legal representative. Um, probably attract some people who genuinely want to help this community, I'm sure. I wish that that was a very large percentage, I don't know that it is. But there are going to be people that want authority, as you say, unchecked. They want that, they want power over people. And, and who both traditionally and especially recently has both less inherent rights and respect and consideration from the authorities than unaccompanied minor children. Um, and so you see that, so you can't be surprised that this sort of thing is happening. Now again, this is not something that began with Donald Trump. Just this most recent set of reports stretch back to 2014. And even in 2014, the numbers are significantly lower, but they're still insanely high. But when you have as a policy that you are going to detain more and more of these children for longer and longer, you are naturally, of course, yeah. gonna have more of the same sorts of systemic abuses that we saw previously. And on top of that, as a guiding philosophy for this policy, you have not any concern for the welfare of the children, but these kids are a tactic to scare other people away from coming to this country. And as long as they're being held, as long as people know that that's likely to happen to their children, then that accomplishes the deterrence that we want. It doesn't matter how they're being treated. In fact, perversely, if they're being abused and victimized, that should be scarier for for parents who are considering coming. So I'm not saying that that was a sort of conscious decision on the part of the authorities, but it's kind of a, a side effect that certainly helps them in their mission to scare people from yeah. El Salvador if, and Guatemala and, and other countries from things, making that trip. If bad things happen to people, they're like, okay, not necessarily good, that's what we planned as you pointed out. Just like, okay, maybe they'll think twice. The rest of them aren't here yet. They'll think twice about what may happen to their kids. Yeah.
Yeah, and uh, so I want to give a uh, 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 shout out to the, the representative Ted Deutsch who, who um, released this information during a hearing. Uh, some quotes from him, he says, these documents demonstrate over the past three years, there have been 154 staff on a company minor. Let me repeat that, staff on a company minor allegations of sexual assault. So the, the, the harshest accusations out of this set. Uh, together, these documents detail an environment of systemic sexual assaults by staff on unaccompanied children. And to, to put some more numbers to what's happened recently, since the Trump administration enacted its zero tolerance policies last year, the number of children detained uh, put detention centers nearly at full capacity. By September of last year, almost 13,000 minors are being detained, with over 3,000 children being held in a tent city where journalists and advocates described inhumane living conditions. And if the conditions are horrendous at the permanent facilities, I would have to imagine that the standards at the hastily thrown together tent cities or concentration camps, as many people refer to them, for these children uh, probably don't have higher standards, if I had to guess. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.